Hi, in this video we're going to look at an introduction to components and page types. We're not going to delve into creating them just yet. This is going to be in later videos. This video is just an introduction on what they are and the values and the differences between a component and a page type. Let's get started. So firstly, a component is ultimately a look, a rendering that has a specific look and a data source which this look reads from or this UI reads from. And it has also something called rendering parameters that enable you to configure some information about how this data is being rendered. So for instance, let's say we had an about us data source. It might have a title like about us and a description, say, lorem ipsum. What happens now is I might have a rendering that shows it as a promo or as a content like this about us and the description for it. I might use the rendering parameters to actually enable me to change maybe the border color or the background, anything that's associated with how the rendering happens. So you can consider the rendering as your view and the data source as your model. And later on, we're going to look at how we create such a component. And rendering parameters are usually things like your CSS class, your styles, uh, maybe background color, anything that you don't really want to see it with your data, but it's part of your component. Page types, however, are completely different in terms of that a page type doesn't actually have a rendering at all. So it, it doesn't have any rendering. And of course, since it doesn't have a rendering, it doesn't have rendering parameters. So it really doesn't have a view. It's only a model that has a set of fields. So when you define a page type, let's say an article page, you are ultimately defining what should be in there. So you might have heading, you might have an author, you might have content and so on, but you're not defining how an article page would look like. You'd still need to create a component to say the actual UI of the article page. You're just saying what data field should be there when you create a page of type article, for instance. You usually in, put the fields on the page type itself rather than on the component if you're going to do things like filtration or listing for them because you want to quickly access them. And components are a bit more difficult because components are optional. They get put on placeholders, whereas fields on actual page type are always going to be there. So, for instance, I could have, in the same scenario of the article page, I could have just created the component inside of the page and added everything in it. But then if I wanted to create a list of articles with filters and so on, it's going to be a bit more difficult because I have to access the component within the article page, which I might not know. Let's see this in action. So I'm opening up my Sitecore instance and I'm going to go to the custom route type that has been created for us automatically by the style guide sample. And as you can see here, this has a template of example custom route type. And you can easily see if you look at the normal one, it has an app route template. Now, an app route template has page metadata, which is the page title, and that's it. Whereas my custom route type has also headline, author, and content. So it's like an article page where I have all this data for it. As I said, this on its own does not have rendering. This type does not have a rendering. It doesn't have a view. It doesn't have a component to show how it looks. But it does have the fields that actually show the data. So if we go to renderings, project, training series, you won't find one for that route type, but you will find what you will find is actually a component called style guide custom route type. That's a pure component with its own rendering here. 
but this component does not have a data source location or a data source template because we're going to see that this relies on the data coming from the route type itself. Whereas if I choose any component, any other component, you can find it has a data source template and data source location because it's actually retrieving its data from a data source. So I'll show you two things here. I'll show you this custom route type just to prove to you that it does have a component in there. So if I click here and go up, see this is a component that I can easily delete from here. And now this is the page type with no components on it. I can go back and add my component again and it's going to get all the data without actually asking me for a data source. Again, because this is reading all the data from its parent ultimately. Whereas if I add another component, let's say a promo, let me actually add a promo here. What it's going to do is it's going to ask me, where do you want to read the data from? Because the data is not in my page template itself or the page type itself. So I have to read it from somewhere else, which is usually from my data folder. So I can see here, it read this data and showed it here. I can have multiple promos here beside each other, or I can have them in different pages. And that's the idea of reusing this content. So this content doesn't sit with the page, but rather it sits in my data folder. Here and can be reused by multiple pages. One other thing I'm going to show you on this promo is that it has a rendering parameter called write image, which enables me to switch how it's displayed. Now this is switched here. If I add another promo, which reads from the same data source, it can have the image on the left side rather than on the right side. So as you can see, there are two here. They have the same data, but the image on, is on different sides. Now, if I change this, say, hello world twice and save, you're going to see that it's going to be updated at the bottom as well because it's, they're both reading from the same data source. But because the rendering parameter is actually saying how it should be laid out, this is why each one of them has different layout, has different structure ultimately but they do read from the same content. Now, if we go into the code very quickly, again, I'm not going to go too much into this because we're going to go into this in deeper details in the next two videos. But you can see here that my custom route type component has fields being read directly from the route itself. So I'm reading from Sitecore context route fields headline author content rather than from the component. If I'm creating a normal component, it's done a bit different because I read from the props, the actual fields directly. So this is the difference. So it's either reading from the props if it has a data source or I'm reading from the route data like here. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we're going to look at how to create this, the promo we've seen in this demo. And the video after, we're going to see how to create custom route types.